Hi guys, and welcome back to Hack Your Health. I'm going to continue with my series on the specific carbohydrate diet today. And I'm going to go more in depth into the groceries that I personally bought on the specific carbohydrate diet and why I chose to buy those things. Basically, I did a lot of research when I did this diet into what anti-inflammatory things I could eat, what digests most easily, and I'd just like to share a bit more in depth with you guys and show you the specifics of what I bought. So let's get right into it. Um, I'm gonna do this in two parts because I have an appointment soon, so I might look a little different partway through the video. And I'm going to start with the meat and protein first because those, a lot of them have to go back into the fridge and the freezer. So let's start with the most basic and simplest, most filling and long lasting food that I found really great on this diet. And that is to simply buy a whole chicken. So you know, a whole chicken. So I always bought an organic or as close to organic chicken as I possibly could. And even those are, those are more expensive and it can seem like a lot to pay for a chicken. But I have found that for one thing, they don't shrink as much when they're cooked. They taste better. And when you're in a healing state, it's really important to reduce as much as you can what kind of things could be irritating your body. So a chicken that's raised with antibiotics and with a diet that's not appropriate for the chicken, that's feeling a lot of stress, because I do have a feeling that the more stressed out the animal is when you eat it, it's possible that some of that carries over into you. Um, and maybe I can do another video and research that more deeply, but getting the highest quality, especially with meat and dairy, was the best. Also, a lot of factory farmed meats, probably most of them, are raised on genetically modified soy, soy and corn feed. And of course, those are very high in glyco, gly, glycophate. And Sorry, I always want to call it glycophosphate, but I know that's not right. Glycophate. <laughs> and um, basically, that's just a pesticide, but it's also an antibiotic. And as you know, probably, when you go up the food chain, the toxins become more concentrated. So basically, you're putting yourself higher up the food chain and you're going to get a more concentrated source of these kinds of toxins basically by eating a meat source that's being fed that kind of food. So if you get an organic animal or at least a non-GMO raised kind of animal, you're going to limit your exposure to some of those toxins and especially glycophate which has been linked to a lot of health issues. So I would really suggest if it's in your budget to get an organic chicken and organic meats and dairy products, especially just because of that burden of toxicity that's possible in those kinds of meats, not to mention the antibiotics. You basically want to let your body go back to a healing and healthy state and allow it to do so with the least amount of toxins and additional problems entering into your body during this healing time. So if you're on a budget, which I was and largely am, um, you can also get something like this. So this is chicken necks and backs. Oh yeah, and the great thing about this chicken is that it usually lasts like maybe three days, then you can also make a soup out of it. So even though it's expensive to buy the chicken, you're getting so many meals out of this one particular thing. But these are super, so this was less than $2 Canadian, and you can make a great soup out of this, and if you're on a super budget like I was, you can then remove all of the meat off of these bones and use it to make like a chicken vegetable soup. So you can first boil all these bones and then remove the meat and then you have a protein 
and a great bone broth for less than $2. These ones aren't organic or anything like that, but you actually can find them and they're still really affordable even if you find the organic ones, especially if you go to a farmer's market or some local kind of place like that, you'll probably have a better chance. So just look around. Another really great thing is to incorporate some kind of liver or other organ meats into your diet. And I know a lot of people don't like those, but liver is super high in vitamin A and very high in iron and just a lot of high concentrations of things that if you have been in a state where you're not absorbing nutrients and minerals and all that stuff for a while, liver is a really concentrated source of a lot of the things that you probably do need. That's why um, in most traditional kinds of cultures, they feed it to pregnant women and it's considered an honor to eat the liver in a lot of cultures because of how nutritious, nutritious it is. So it's really important for people that are in a high nutritional need state, such as pregnant women, but also people who have had a long-term chronic digestive illness. So this is an example of something that's actually really good. So this is a duck liver pate, which I know sounds weird, but it's kind of like a, one of those liver kind of spreads that you can buy, but without a lot of added things. So this is locally made and this was $13 so it's fairly expensive but I do think that it's worth it to spend a little more if it's in your budget at all on certain kinds of things just because they'll be so helpful and you really don't need it every day or anything like that like even if you eat it maybe once a week or every, even every two weeks or you could eat it every day if you felt like it but it's better to get it here and there if you can than to not get it at all. Um, and you can also buy very cheaply chicken livers and beef livers at the grocery store and a lot of butchers because not that many people want to buy them. They're a lot cheaper. So this is a really tasty, already pre-made way to get some liver in your diet. But if you are on a budget, you can also just buy those and kind of cook them with onions or whatever and it's really, really affordable and a great way to just boost your strength. The liver is often, in your own body, is often very compromised by this disease state because it has to process all the toxins that are created in your digestive system due to that overgrown bacteria. So I don't know for sure, but I would assume that the kinds of things that are in an animal's liver are the same that are in your own and you could probably I imagine support the liver by eating liver to re replenish what it needs. A lot of people think that there's toxins stored in the liver and you shouldn't eat it, but that's really not true. The liver is a place where they are processed and like it is a detoxifying organ, so it's not a storage place for toxins like um, maybe the fat or maybe there are certain areas which store toxins liver is a place where they're processed so it's not like there's going to be this huge store of toxins in the liver that's kind of a misconception of its function so it's still very important to get a good quality source grass-fed beef liver and stuff like that as much as you can to limit that exposure to toxins but it's not a storage place, basically. <laughs> so another great thing is going to be tuna and these are just some herring. So these are great source of omega-3, which is super anti-inflammatory and it's kind of some variety in your diet. These herring and sardines and those smaller fish, those are low on the food chain. So I wouldn't eat tuna very often because it's more contaminated with, you know, mercury and stuff like that. But these smaller things like herring, sardines, those are tiny, tiny fish, bottom of the food chain. There's a much smaller toxin load in those kinds of fish. So that's why I would suggest eating those more frequently if this is going to be like a big part of your diet rather than the tuna or those more contaminated kinds of fish. So this is just, you know, steak and I'm sorry that this looks so horrible this is out of my freezer but um you know if you buy it in bulk it's a lot cheaper 
and I find that that's really easy. You can do steak and asparagus on mushrooms on the side, and a steak already tastes good. It's like salt, pepper, bit of garlic, or however you want to do it. Very easy to prepare. And this was four steaks for $25. They weren't grass-fed though, but uh, that's four meals. So it's not as expensive as you would assume, perhaps, but um, you know, it's not an everyday thing, but it's good to keep a few in the freezer in case you don't have time to go grocery shopping. And then this was another staple for me. So these are non-medicated skin-on, bone-in chicken thighs. So this is another way that you can make soup, um, but I just loved these in the oven. They're really flavorful. You can just bake some beets or whatever else vegetables along with them, throw a bit of garlic in there, and they taste really, really good. This was about $8 Canadian for four, so this would be easily two meals. So, you know, these are also affordable, and the fat and the skin, I would get them with the skin on because then you're getting the fat and it's like more filling and nourishing that way. Do not fear fat on this diet or you won't survive basically like that's gonna be necessary and then there's just one more which is a vegetarian uh so that's hemp seeds and i would 100 percent recommend getting hemp seeds they have all of the essential amino acids and all of the essential fatty acids that your body can't make itself so it's a very complete food um it's also very well balanced with omega-6 and omega-3 so a lot of people in the Western kinds of diets eat too much omega-6. And omega-6 is an inflammatory source of fat, so it leads to more higher inflammation in the body. Omega-3, which is salmon and stuff like that, um, actually reduces inflammation. The idea is that you want to get a balance of the two. You don't want to have way too much omega-6 and not enough omega-3. So hemp seeds have omega-6 and omega-3 in balance in the same proportion as in your body. So that sums up the protein section. And when I come back, I will go into the vegetables and other kinds of foods. Hi guys. So I'll just finish up with the protein section quickly. Uh, one important thing that I forgot is eggs. So eggs are super versatile, you can fry them, poach them, whatever, and make omelets. So I would recommend always having eggs around. Be sure to get organic or pasture raised kind of the best quality eggs that you can find because, sorry, because the the healthier and more you know well raised the chicken is the higher the eggs are going to be in omega-3 and then they're proportionally lower in omega-6 so that is also an anti-inflammatory quality um if you buy the really cheap factory farm eggs those chickens because of the way that they're raised and probably because of the feed that they have and the inactive life and all the things that they endure, they have higher inflam inflammation in their own bodies. Um, but basically those eggs are higher in omega-6 than organic eggs. They have a better three to six ratio. And when you're out, a great thing to have around is some kind of pepperoni or jerky kind of food. Um, I found that the farmer's market or local kind of health food stores had kinds that were friendly to this diet. And of course, in the protein section, there's also going to be things like nuts, seeds, legumes. So, you know, walnuts, for example, are another great source of omega-3s and they are helpful for your brain. There's lots of healing qualities of walnuts and other nuts. I would recommend for these kinds of foods to keep a food journal because some people have a tolerance issue with them and some don't, uh, especially with seeds. And I would just recommend 
tracking how you do on those just to see how it is for you. Um, same with lentils. Some people do great on lentils and others have a hard time. It's likely that at the beginning of the diet you'll have a lot more sensitivities and intolerances than you do after you've done it for a while. So right at the very beginning you're just going to have to be a bit more careful and you can always introduce these foods after a few months or whenever you're starting to feel a lot better and chances are that at some point you won't be intolerant to them anymore. So you can always try them again later. Um, and then of course there's dairy, which is another one of those things where some people are more tolerant than others. I could always have natural kind of cheese, but not like block cheddar cheese. That one was bad for me, but regular, real, like European kind of cheese was always fine for me. And same with kefir and yogurt is only technically SCD friendly if you make it yourself. However, if you get a really good kind of yogurt, I'm sure that that really is fine, but just be careful and I would recommend keeping a food diary at first. But if you can tolerate kefir or homemade style yogurt, those are great sources of probiotics and those would be a really helpful thing to have in your diet as long as you tolerate them well. So now I'll do sort of the facts section, although a lot of these overlap. Um, so of course there's the good old standard coconut oil, which I personally would use sparingly just because it's not a local food in my climate at least. and. I have been put under the impression that local foods are the best to heal with. However, it's very well tolerated. It has a lot of short chain or medium chain fatty acids, which apparently are really good for you. Um, you can also use it on your skin and like it has various uses. So I would recommend coconut oil over many other kinds of oil. And butter is showed you the French side. <laughs> um, butter is, in my opinion, basically essential because it has so much healthy fat and it has a lot of really healing nutrients. And in the book, Nourishing Traditions, she goes in a lot about butter. So if you wanna know more about it, I would recommend getting that book and reading it. Um, and once again, I would definitely recommend using grass-fed, organic, whatever the best quality is that you can find because the health of the animal is really going to affect the quality of the butter. And once again, cows are fed generally genetically modified corn. So that diet is not ideal for them. So if you can get a pasture-raised cow, the quality is going to be much better. The taste is going to be better and it's much less likely to trigger an inflammatory response. So I would highly recommend getting at least organic and grass-fed if you can find it. And it's usually about twice the cost, but you go through it so slowly that in the scheme of life, spending a few extra dollars every month or whatever on butter is definitely worth it to feel better, I think. And then I tend to use a lot of olive oil, which I know isn't supposed to be cooked at a very high temperature, but I think for low temperature cooking, it's fine. I use it. Um, you can also use it on salads and stuff like that. And you can use grapeseed, all these different kinds of oils, but I would not recommend using canola oil. So canola oil is marketed as being high in omega-3, so it's a little bit deceptive because you'd think it would be anti-inflammatory, but generally it's a genetically modified crop, high in pesticides, and it's also very highly processed. So it's deodorized, it goes through very high temperatures, and basically it's not a very natural product, and I definitely think that there's a very good chance that it could trigger inflammatory kind of 
responses basically due to the residue of the pesticides, the fact that it's genetically modified, and the kinds of processing that it goes through. Those are all things that make me suspect that a very sensitive person may have a problem with it, so I wouldn't recommend eating it. And definitely do more research yourself because that's more of like what just makes sense to me than a highly educated opinion, but I have read a fair amount about it. And I would recommend using a naturally occurring oil, like an expeller pressed kind of oil that doesn't get heated to high temperatures, definitely would avoid genetically modified and high pesticide residue foods, just because those could be potential triggers. Olive oil is great. It's processed at a low temperature. It's a uh, very, in my opinion, safe food to eat, but of course, keeping a food journal will eliminate the particular sensitivities that you may have, and you can always switch to a different kind of oil. I used grapeseed oil as well because it tolerates a higher cooking temperature, so you can find an oil that suits your cooking style and your basically preferences and needs. So there's a few more items that I would consider essential on the specific carbohydrate diet, and one of them is honey. Basically, you're gonna want something sweet or sweetened at least every once in a while, and honey is actually a really healing, healthy food. It has um, antimicrobial qualities. It's used a lot in Ayurvedic medicine. It's it's a medicinal food itself, yet it's sweet, so you can eat it, not in large quantities of course, but eating a moderate, mild amount of honey is fine on a specific carbohydrate diet. So in the case of a craving or just wanting something sweet, I would recommend always having honey around. Um, so this, something like this was like probably $11, and these are all Canadian, uh, but it lasts, again, a really long time and I think that some of the best honey that I've ever found is again at the local farmers market because those are bees that are around you. I think the most connected with your local place that you can be with your foods and talking to the people that raise it, it creates an experience that is a lot stronger and in my opinion helps you heal actually better to get more rooted in where you really are, especially with this very globalized, crazy kind of world, like to have that local connection, I think is really important if you have the chance. So this is almost empty, but this is apple cider vinegar. And this is also a local one, but Bragg's is a really good brand. And make sure it has the mother, so that it's raw, unpasteurized apple cider vinegar. This can be used for many different things. I use it when I'm making bone broth, for example, and I have another video about that. And I use it on salads or many different things. So I would consider that both of these essential. So my frame is not perfect for this, but these are a bunch of different kinds of vegetables. And basically I'm just gonna go through them and kind of say some of them a bit why, or just to give you ideas. So carrots, when you're making broth or just to sweeten things, cauliflower, you can grind it up and make a, a bottom of kind of like a pie or cake or get experimental with cauliflower or you can obviously eat it with eggs or soup or whatever. Broccoli. So all of these cruciferous vegetables like Brussels sprouts, broccoli, cauliflower, um, cabbage are really high in <laughs> whatever fights cancer. So there's been several studies on these cruciferous vegetables in particular and how they protect your body and they protect you from cancer. They, um, they're basically really healthy foods. And I'm sorry, I didn't do more research before this video, but basically those are great things to focus on incorporating into your diet because they'll really help, um, it really help with healing. And same with cabbage. So cabbage is very anti-inflammatory food. You can 
uh, one traditional re remedy is to put cabbage leaves on arthritis and stuff like that because it tends to draw out inflammation and when you eat it it also has anti-inflammatory properties as food so putting it in soup and putting it in sauerkraut to make your own sauerkraut there's a lot of ways to incorporate cabbage and it's also a super healing food garlic so garlic is another one that i would personally i ate basically every day it's very high in sulfur which a lot of people are lacking and it's also antimicrobial antifungal so it can kind of help support your body in removing the burden that it has that's caused your diseases and kind of fighting off that on another level. Um, with all of these vegetables, it's great to pay attention to the kind of soil that they're grown in because on a biodynamic or organic farm, it's much more likely that, the, that there's gonna be a lot more vitamins and minerals in the vegetables that are produced. So that's partially because of the way that the soil is managed. Instead of relying on chemical fertilizers, they need to add things like you know manure and compost to the soil, which in addition to nitrogen also put a lot more minerals into the soil. Um, and then also when they spray pesticides, it kills a lot of the microorganisms that create healthy soil and reduces the nutrients in that food. So there's several reasons why it's beneficial to get food from healthy soil versus depleted soil. So with a lot of these product produce, <laughs> it's important to get organic if you can or from a good source because that's gonna increase the nutrient value of the food as well, of course, as decrease the toxin load on your body, which is always good if you're healing. Beets are another thing that I ate almost every day. They're high in antioxidants and they basically are a very good healing food. As well, they're sort of a bit of like a starchy type food that is allowed. So potatoes, of course, you can't eat, but beets it's kind of like a potato only a sweet version of one and i just found that that was a great way to also bulk up a meal and also feel good about what i was eating same thing with ginger that's another really anti-inflammatory reduces nausea and lots of healing benefits of what as well onion of course is essential and it's also good for sulfur and adding flavor to your food I eat quite a few avocados because they're also easy to transport and they are very filling. So in addition to being a good source of fat and everything, I found they were a very convenient, filling, quick way to have a meal really feel like a meal. Limes, good for flavoring and you may not be so satisfied with water every single time. So since it's not really great to drink too much juice on this diet because of the amount of sugar it contains. You can always squeeze some lime into the water and make it more interesting and flavorful. It's also helpful for digestion to put some lemon or lime in the water if you are drinking water with your meal. If you put some lemon or lime in it, it can help with digestion as well. Apples. So I generally cooked apples before I ate them to break them down more, but you can definitely eat apples um, and mushrooms. So this is like a mix of different kinds of mushrooms. So they have a lot of healing properties as well. You can always do a little bit of research into that, but incorporating mushrooms is a very good idea. And then these little Lara bar things this is only dates and peanut butter. Those are the only two ingredients in this peanut butter one. Some of them have sugar, so you have to actually read the label, but I would recommend those for like, if you're in a pinch, you're going out somewhere because it's an easy snack, portable food. So of course there's tons of other fruits and vegetables that you can eat on this diet. These are just a few of the basics that I found that I bought like 
all the time. And yeah, just try to have some variety in your diet. But if you're going grocery shopping for the first time, like these are some ideas. And I also have some blueberries. So, you know, any kind of local in-season fruit where you live is gonna be great. Lots of antioxidants, lots of fiber. It's always a good idea to eat in-season local fruits. And with blueberries, you can also buy them frozen and add them to like yogurt or whatever you want like that. And um, those are also very anti-inflammatory kind of food. That's also sweet, so you can use it as a dessert as well. So another idea that is pretty easy is to buy these um, miso paste. So this is organic soybeans and then dried wakame seaweed, and I might be saying that wrong. Um, so these are, this is a good um, probiotic as well. And these are lots of minerals because it's like a sea, it's a seaweed. So that's another idea for kind of getting some variety into your diet. And since you're gonna be cooking more, probably on this diet, it's a great idea to invest in a variety of spices. And a few examples are turmeric. So this is like a little box of it or I don't know, this is cumin, but like turmeric is very anti-inflammatory as well. Um, so you can just throw that into your meals basically every day or whatever and support your body that way. Um, a lot of spices are also medicinal. So if you use a variety of spices and herbs while you're cooking, you're going to be getting the benefit of that and it will be a lot more interesting to eat. There's also things like this, which is a spice mix. So this is just like Indian spices and nothing else. So this is totally good on the diet. Um, and then it kind of can add some variety without being too difficult to mix it yourself. Like you know what it's gonna turn out. So those are a nice idea too. Um, and you'll notice that I haven't included any of the nightshades like bell peppers, eggplant, tomatoes are the main ones, although there are other nightshades. I personally found that those were more irritating when I started this diet, and I have heard that from a lot of people that nightshades were kind of like a problem food for them, and I'm not 100% sure why. It's something about how they're broken down or some compound that they have in them or something like that that if you're already kind of a lowered immune state can be problematic. I would recommend either eliminating nightshades at the beginning if you really want to be totally safe and do your research about them too to make sure that that resonates with you or to keep a food journal and see if you tolerate nightshades and then choose to eat them or not eat them based on that. So then of course there's salt and I would not recommend using iodized table salt. That's fairly processed and lacking in a lot of minerals. So uh, sea salt or Himalayan salt is gonna probably be a lot easier for your body to process and support your healing in a more, it's, it's gonna be likely better. That's one of the first things the naturopath told me when I went to him was to switch to sea salt or Himalayan salt. And black pepper. When you eat black pepper with turmeric, it absorbs the turmeric more, also with fat. So if you have fat, black pepper, and turmeric together, that's a really great combination for absorbing the anti-inflammatory properties of the turmeric. And of course, black pepper is just great for seasoning all kinds of things. So this is kind of a random item. It's nutritional yeast. This is something that a lot of vegans eat because it's high in a lot of B vitamins. And this stuff tastes really good. It kind of tastes like cheese. So I used to put it, I uh, make uh, kale chips and you just put them in the oven at a very low temperature if you don't have a dehydrator and coat it with yeast flakes and olive oil and you can find lots of recipes online too. Um, that tastes really good and it kind of satisfies that 
craving for chips or for cheese or some snack food. So I definitely recommend nutritional yeast. The last item on my list of things is tea. So you can get lots of kinds of teas that have a very soothing effect. And so chamomile is an example. Tulsi is very anti-inflammatory and actually is used before meditation traditionally as well. So it kind of creates a calmer state. Um, of course, this is a mild effect, but it still supports the general direction that you want to go in, which is kind of reducing stress, reducing inflammation, and allowing the body to heal. So I would definitely recommend using teas. One other thing I used was dandelion root and had made that into a tea. I actually just got the dandelions myself from like a field because it's really expensive to buy them and I dried them myself. So you can either buy them or you can probably find some. And um, yeah, that's very good for detoxifying the liver and for digestion as well. So I really hope that this video has been helpful. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions or meal ideas or anything like that, feel free to leave those in the comments below. Not only for myself, but for other people that might be watching this video to give them more ideas too. And everyone's gonna have their own version of what things they like the most, what they eat the most often on this diet. But these are a few ideas that I used a lot and this concept that it's not only about eliminating foods but choosing and selecting the ones that are really gonna help you heal is basically what I found really interesting and what I found helped me the most while doing this diet so kind of looking at it not of just what you can't eat but looking at what you can eat and choosing foods that are going to support you the most or as much as possible so the good quality anti-inflammatory nutrient rich variety of foods and definitely in my case at least a lot of the changes that i made were permanent because i really enjoyed a lot of these foods and i became a lot more aware of how to take care of myself and that's really important and it's a huge gift so you know, even if there's a lot of suffering involved in having an autoimmune disease, when you heal from it, you learn so much about yourself, you gain so much strength and empowerment, and that is something that can never really be taken away from you again, even if you have other problems, or which you will have other problems, you'll have this sort of strength and confidence to go on because you've taken care of yourself, you know what you need, and it enables you basically to continue learning and growing in a healthy way. So I found that this diet was more than just a diet. It was about becoming more conscious and aware and doing something really good for myself and basically taking the power back in my own life. So. Yeah, I hope that this is helpful, um, and let me know if you have any questions, of course, and if you like this video, let me know by pressing like, and if you have any suggestions of videos that you'd like me to do, uh, let me know in the comments, and if you want to see more of my health-related videos, please subscribe, and if you're doing this specific carbohydrate diet or considering it, um, I I really am happy for you and I hope that this can support you in some way and all the best on your healing journey. Thanks so much for watching. Okay, bye. And one last thing that I forgot to mention, thank you so much if you're still watching, is that I found that it was also really helpful to switch over all of my shampoo, soap, uh, conditioner, everything that came in contact with the outside of my body, lotion, laundry detergent, dish soap, stuff like that, to ones that were very mild, natural, and didn't trigger any kind of response as well, because sometimes it's hard to tell what is triggering 
so I switched over to natural kind of soap like this is just a homemade or like a locally made soap with very very few ingredients like an olive oil soap or something like that and this kind of body wash slash shampoo is also really good and um, there's a lot of good kinds of soap and basically I would recommend removing the sulfates and the you know different parabens and things that the antibiotic elements of hand soaps and stuff like that because those can also really irritate your body and your skin does absorb to some extent but basically you want to calm down that autoimmune response in any way that you can and another really simple and I think important way that you can do that is to not have your skin in frequent contact with irritants so that's just one last thing that I throw in there and um yes thank you again for watching okay bye